people talk about brokers as you know a negative term. What's your value? I also know this light is available. I also know this builder. I can go directly. I can buy this asset. Use this information and data and try to manipulate the decision. Around 45 to 48 percent of the space is coming towards North Bank. Half of the new supply is coming towards North Bank. Hello investors welcome to the very first episode of uh, 100 feet road uh, in this podcast we'll be talking about the most frequently asked questions that we have received on our channel and uh, for answering these questions we have mr sandeep trivedi today with us uh, hello sir how are you doing today uh, great yeah it's saturday you call me i don't have any choice so i have to come <laughs> okay starting with uh, so i just wanted to so as i mentioned this uh, is about answering certain questions that people mostly asked and uh, to start with the first the you know the main question that everyone basically asks is ki paise kahan lagana hai where to invest uh, in bangalore and uh, you know where will our money appreciate or the value of my uh, investment appreciate so if you can just help us answer that uh, well i mean this is the question which most of the clients ask me every day every time whenever i meet them whether it's a new client or old client I I understand the questions properly. I just modify or qualify the questions. I think what they want to ask is how to go about in investing in real estate. So uh, maybe the question is not exactly where to invest, but how to go about putting the investment in the right framework. Uh, so I I have uh, you know I have some thoughts about it, and that's what I keep telling my clients. Uh, real estate always works in a cluster framework. So you know cluster framework means it's a cluster which is self-contained cluster uh, which take care of all the needs of the stakeholders of the uh, cluster in from real estate perspective and it's not new i mean it's happening from ages like you know you historically if you look at you know real estate clusters or cities which were built they were built around uh, near sea or ports or maybe rivers where you know civilizations were built based on the proximity to the commute and the economic activity which were happening mostly through sea or through river uh come industrial uh, industrialization and you have lot of industrial cities even in india if you look at like you know you have jamshedpur steel city you have bokaro raukela you have bhl uh, who has built many townships across india and these big large industries have actually created real estate uh, to take care of not only the industrial or the economic activity but for uh, residential commercial uh, healthcare education uh, come today you know today we are in information era you know uh, you take top 8 10 12 cities they are basically running on cluster formation you know the cluster may include parameters which are different than what it was there 50 100 years back for example today we are talking about clusters which are based on information technology sector uh, transit hubs uh, maybe transport hubs so if you look at bangalore and we are in bangalore and i talk about bangalore bangalore is basically a information hub you know it is the uh, largest tech sector in india and probably in asia as well it counts among the top 5 uh, it cluster in world so uh, bangalore be predominantly is driven by you know it cluster and if you are looking at investments probably i'm just confining it to uh, bangalore alone Uh, we have to chase where the economic activity is growing where it is moving to be precise so if you look at you know the kind of clusters which were built like 20 25 years back they were built based on where the it parks were built they are the first second third phase of it development happened so it was basically towards south electronic city or towards the east which is whitefield uh, in last 10 20 years you know of course a uh, huge amount of development has taken place bangalore has uh, close to 200 million square feet of stock Uh, which is you can say around 20 lakh people are working in this field, and that that gives demand side, right? That that talks about demand side. So it's it's evident. You look at the data, you look at the clusters. Where were the IT parks were there? Where were the proximity to IT parks were there? There were clusters which are built. So IT White Field is one cluster. Electronic City is one cluster. Outer Ring Road, uh, Marthali, Sir Bilandur is one cluster. Airport also has a big big impact because IT being an international business, you know. It it always try to be closer to airport. So when airport goes towards the city center, most of the clusters are formed near airport, old airport. Now airport is moved to North Bangalore, not part of Bangalore, which is probably you can say 25, 28 kilometers from city center. So that's towards Hyderabad highway. So a lot of you know clusters are actually forming that side also. So my my suggestion and my advice to most of the clients is 
to go about real estate where they can focus on macro factors where you know how the clusters are being formed where the clusters are moving where the new clusters are coming to be precise and vis-a-vis -vis also how they see their uh, lifestyle their career going so probably if their lifestyle their career are aligned to the cluster which is moving towards north then of course that's the area for them uh, it's not like you know it's a universal thing where uh, north bangalore or east bangalore is universally investable product for everyone not necessarily people have invested in west bangalore also and they made good returns and good profits on that so it's purely based on the research which they do based on the macro and micro factors so it's basically depending upon their own lifestyle and their career choices uh, they have to track the economic activity and right? cluster formation hope this qualifies the questions so okay so now in this uh, so when you're saying there are cluster formations so the current in the current environment what are these cluster formations that are happening in current uh, situation in bangalore where do you see these clusters forming in primarily you know uh, which are the you know upcoming and development uh, zones that are in bangalore right now uh, so the the clusters are as i mentioned you know, probably the economic activity is also moving towards probably uh, in in some sense towards let's say north part of bangalore where the international airport is operation the phase 2 is open terminal 2 is open a uh, lot of big companies are open campuses there and i'm not saying only it non it companies also there are large developments are going shell they set up large facilities there uh, if you look at it companies also of course most of the big companies have some presence in that and their presence is increasing so uh, if you ask me cluster formation means i am not saying the existing cluster will shift completely to the new zone but of course you know there will be some migration the some shift will happen so right now if you look at bangalore as a circle or a ball and probably the right half of the ball which is from north east south is the cluster which is getting maximum traction from real estate perspective of course you know there there are always some uh, trigger points which happen which actually create some push some uh, action items which changes things so i i just add you know recently like once the whitefield metro station started by three metro corridor started so metro got functional from uh, let's say mysore road to whitefield now whitefield the pricing was very very uh, probably from in investor perspective attractive but from end user perspective it basically it increased at a threshold level so it was coming closer to threshold levels and it was basically you know going beyond some of the stakeholders budget so what what happened basically uh, they actually started migrating to uh, in some sense mysore road because there the real estate cost is probably uh, relatively uh, lower than what is there in whitefield and for them to travel take 15 like it takes 45 minutes to travel from mysore road to whitefield so for them to travel from belandur or any part in the whitefield itself will take 25 30 minutes so they don't mind spending another 20 minutes in metro because it's uninterrupted there is no traffic jam they can straight away you know board the metro at their house near mysore road and come to whitefield so that kind of things have changed so this has changed uh, i mean of course you know people were thinking because of metro the whitefield market will go really up which is true to some extent but it is also helping the corridor which is diagonally opposite so instead of east it is going diagonally opposite to south west so these things happens so you know we have to continuously constantly see the kind of clusters which are forming so surprisingly mysore road is getting one cluster which is basically catering to whitefield which is di diametrically opposite micro market so uh, the other confusion that uh, people uh, you know have come across in our channel uh, asking these questions are mainly regarding documentation and as we know that you know india's uh, real estate is basically uh, wasn't organized and now it's starting to get organized with organizations like there are and there are so many rules and regulations that have come into play now uh, with so there is a lot of confusion with related to documents like khata what is khata a khata b uh bda being another authority and then you know uh bbmp is another authority so there are multiple authorities that come into picture and you know so people ask a lot of questions regarding you know should i buy uh, if it is a a khata property should i buy a b khata uh, flat in built on a a khata property uh, or plot rather so like that there are a lot of these questions so if you can just probably give some clarity on uh, you know what a khata property means and you know what are these authorities that give that uh, certification to these plots or apartments and so on so you can just help sure. elaborate a little on that uh, well i mean i would like to go back to the basic thing you know i'll just take a minute just to explain how the 
this fundamental thing works. So, as you mentioned, there are two authorities: uh, Development Authority in Bangalore, which is Bangalore Development Authority, and BBMP, which is the Municipal Corporation. In every city, they have like you know. So, what is the fundamental role of a development authority, like a BDA? So, their role is to plan the development of the city. So, they will create a master plan for next twenty, thirty years. They will lay down how the city will grow geographically outbound. So they will decide which all new areas will come in the four year of BDA. So you have Bangalore City, right? Bangalore City was some 400, 500 square kilometers 25 years back, then it increased to 800 square meters. Today we are talking about uh, 1,200 square kilometers of area which is under development zone. So BDA is the job is to actually cover maximum area which it can plan and take care. I mean, of course, because of bandwidth and limited financials or whatever the uh, issues are there, and it's driven by many things, economic things, political things. So Development authority job is to plan the city. They plan the city, they plan the zone, they tell what all can be developed in a particular zone, whether it can be agriculture, industrial, residential, commercial. So they are planning authority. They put the plan for the city. They are development authority, they give approval for plan. So let's say uh, you have a land, let's say you have a 10 acres land and it's zoned as mixed use. So you go to BDA or development authority, you tell them, see, we have this land. I want to build, let's say, uh, maybe 600 apartments and a 5 lakh square foot shopping mall or an IT park or a small school or a small hospital, whatever. So you give a plan to them. Uh, they review the plan based on their guidelines or bylaws. They tell whether it is okay or not. If they say okay, you can start. Uh, construction and uh, you can start selling based on RERA guidelines uh, once the project is completed so once the project is completed they go back to BDA or the development authority and they say oh we have built this and please see this if it is as per the plan we submitted and if it's within the bylaws so once the BDA say okay this is as per the bylaws or plans and we are okay it is ready for occupation they issue occupancy certificate which is OC so OC is occupancy certificate issued by development authorities uh, just to add, you know, the areas which are beyond BDA, like there are a lot of areas in Bangalore which are outside BDA, which are BMRDA or Bayappa zones or maybe Panchayat areas. So BDA may not give approval then, then there the, will be different authorities who will give approval, but the process is same. So they may issue OC. Uh, once OC is issued, uh, of course, development part is done. People start living there. Once people start living there, they need municipal services. What is municipal services? You need a road to the gate of your apartment or a project. So you need water line, you need electrical services, you need basic urban services, which is taken care by BBMP or municipal corporation in each city. So you go to them, you tell them, see, this is the project, there is OC, uh, please approve us. So then uh, individual owners go to the BBMP or municipal corporation. They tell, we have bought this unit, house, villa, whatever, and we have this project approved, this is OC. Uh, please give us khata. Khata is nothing but account. It's account number. So they register your house in their records and issue a khata. Now there are two kinds of khata. Well, basically there are two. One is a khata which is like completely perfect where you know everything is in compliance and you are ready to occupy and you start paying property tax based on that. In some cases, uh, if there are violations or if the builders built extra or there is some uh, amount of deviation. Okay, so then probably you may not get OC. So, but then municipal corporation still will give services because they are giving services and they are providing all the facilities, the roads are there, infrastructure is provided, they are doing all the garbage collection, cleaning. So they still need the property tax. So in that case, what they do, they, they make an entry in, uh, in their books with the, there is no technically B khata, but they enter in form B, which is most people say B khata. So they still issue a B khata or a form B and based on that you can pay your property tax and as and when you get uh, approval for OC you can apply back and get A khata. So technically A khata is the best property to buy. Uh, of course most of the properties we advise are A khata properties but in some cases because of various reasons in Bangalore and in most of the cities there are a lot of properties which are still uh, being occupied, sold, resold uh, which may not have A khata. So there is some amount of risk related to that, like you know, probably government banks don't give funding to A khata, uh, B khata properties. Uh, maybe sometimes if something happens, then you know, claiming insurance may be a challenge. So, but till date we have not heard anything like this. But fundamentally, I think we always advise A khata is a better product. You should go for an A khata property. Uh, so I mean, basically, you know, just to answer your question, or people who are asking, you know, uh, we will advise if you are buying a property, you should buy A khata property. 
So just out of curiosity, this is a personal question, not something that I think people have asked. But uh, do if so if there is a B Khata property, so the property taxes that we have to pay, is that uh, going to be higher than some someone who owns a A Khata property? It's, it's if a, you want to pay extra BBAP, has no problem. But, but it's charged? not same. No, no, it's, no, it's same. not. It's the so same. So property tax is self declaration. So it's self declared. So you declare your property tax and pay. Okay. Uh, in case BB, BBMB find it's basically lower than the, whatever they have thought, mm-hmm. they may send you a notice. But it's basically uh, there's no second cent. I mean, they're trying to streamline it now, but uh, it doesn't there's matter. The property tax doesn't matter. So primarily, it's the same. Same. So, uh, in terms of you know how brokers are, there are uh, I think means uh, there are uh, you know a lot of these videos where people talk about brokers as you know a negative term or. There are people who have appreciated a role of broker, and uh, you know, just to give some context to this, uh, I want want to understand like what is exactly the role of a agent or a broker or consultant, like multiple terms. What is the role that an agent plays uh, when someone is buying a property? Also, like basically, what difference do they make from if I am going alone and you know single handedly buying a property? Whereas, what difference can a broker or a uh, consultant make when we are basically uh, taking their help? So, if you can just elaborate or maybe give an idea in terms of how they benefit or not benefit the pros or cons that are there for uh, such a process. Sure. Uh, interestingly, uh, you know, uh, broker is a very broad term. Uh, everyone is doing broking in some way or other, mm-hmm. even in real estate. So you will see, you know, the the street vendor sometimes also tell which light is available, which is not available. He may have contact of the owners. He is also technically broker because he has the information. Many street vendors do broking also. They do side deals. Farmers do side deals many times. Uh, they are all kind of brokers, but then what we call uh, professional brokers or professional consultants is different. So I I am being asked these questions every time I meet client. What do you do? What's your value? I also know this light is available. I also know this builder. I can go directly. I can buy flats and land. That that's very point. Uh, it may be applicable to some extent to some set of people who have the bandwidth, the time, and the resources to do their own research. And it's good, it's good. Of course, you they know. So people know their financials. They know their requirements, and they can do their own research. Uh, it's applicable, you know, not only at like uh, real estate. It's applicable to automobile also. You may want to buy a car, and maybe you want to spend some time. So you want to buy a car or a flat or anything. You want to plan a holiday. You can do yourself also, right? So there is no harm in that. There is no wrong in that, and people can do that very well. No, no doubt about it. But uh, majority of the people don't have that much time bandwidth, and they don't have that much domain knowledge also. So, for example, uh, what is happening in market? Probably an agent or a consultant will know because he's doing this business for probably considerable amount of time. Let's say two year, five year, ten year, more the better, right? So, uh, if you know the market, you are seeing the trend, how things are moving. You are seeing which are market has grown, which are not grown, and why. You have that uh, wisdom, or you have that knowledge, or you have that uh, insight. Uh, you'll be able to advise the clients better because what happens, what clients see is just what is available in front of them. They cannot visualize. They don't know how things move. So what we do as a consultant or as an agent, and I, I say professional agent, just even now they are all kind of agents. In Bangalore, there is a saying they say there are two brokers per square feet. So <laughs> that's there, right? So they they are random brokers across uh, Bangalore, and a lot of people who after retirement uh, have free time, they start doing broking. A uh, lot of uh, People who want to do side business also like they have side jobs, so they they do a proper job and weekend they do broking in their apartment or communities and all that. That's fine. That's not a problem. So, a lot of uh, people who are running preschools, for example, who have only uh, worked till half day and after that they are free. So they do broking. So, so this uh, this just to uh, you know form. So let me your, uh, yeah. So let me complete. So what value and we do is or a professional broker, not me. Right, any exactly. professional broker do is. So they will tell the insights in terms of which flat to buy and why. So I'll tell you enough examples here. You know, clients have approached the developer directly, and uh, it's a psychological thing. Like developers will try to sell units which are not easy to sell. Right? So they will try to push units which are not easy to sell, and they will know in every unit, any project, you know, some units will be difficult to sell, some will be some will be very easy to sell. And uh, so of course they they know the properties or units which are easy to sell, they can sell any day. Right, anyone can sell any day. But so sometimes probably people buy units, they end up buying units which may not be best for them or for 
accidental project also so they don't visualize you know when the property will be built if they are buying a property in 9 10 12 20th floor uh, what they will overlook how the orientation will be how the flow will be uh, it may be difficult for you know a large chunk of uh, buyers so what we do is because we understand the master plan we have seen the trend we know how it will go we know what is the neighboring development coming uh, we give the facts to the buyers we give the rational information and then we advise based on their requirement because what happens it's a very emotional process it's a very emotional decision to take buying a property i mean it's like you know putting 1 crore 2 crore money for a property which you will be using for next 10 years or whatever it's a very emotional thing because you will be living there it's a physical thing so sometimes you know people if they do wrong decisions you know it affects their uh, personal social life to a large extent so we advise them in terms of what to buy why to buy and then we give logic and data enough data to them to support our recommendation so there's another uh, follow up to that that i would want to ask so like we say great power comes uh, great responsibility comes with great power yeah because you guys have so much information and data would there be a possibility where people would uh, be you know uh, would use this information and data and try to manipulate the decision based on okay you know you take this apartment or this thing purposely so that that difficult unit is also sold or something of that sort or is there a, a position where you know with, with the data trying to prove that okay you know this kind of pricing is still valid uh, or trying to charge higher uh, than what it should be just say for example a one crore property is sold at say 1.25 or 1.5 crores so because you have so much information would there be a possibility where you know you can use this information to do that as well so they, this thing can happen in any field any sector right you know there are people who can manipulate things and uh, do business in a different direction so of course you know i'll not say no there are people who do that and it happens uh, in many cases and we also seen that but we don't do that we follow a process uh, because we are in this business for long and we have to continue to do our business and we are very transparent in process with them so uh, but they you are right actually this thing can happen but then you know i i my experiences in bangalore there are a lot of people mostly people are from professional background well educated well informed i don't think you can do those things now in bangalore to the buyers okay. they have enough information wisdom networking with them to be able to take a right decision and i in fact i i will be happy to share you know we have met so many clients who are well informed they probably sometimes know more than us which is good yeah it's a challenge for us so we also try and you know match up to them so that's there there are uh, several micro markets and space uh, you know in bangalore which are booming and growing and stuff like we you initially had uh, elaborated on that so the, uh, the east side of bangalore where we see like areas like so starting from whitefield to uh, sarjapur to like the little uh, southeast side as well so this entire zone has seen a lot of development happen in the last i think 5 to 10 years and uh, based on that there's so much development uh, that has already started and actually not started it has almost come to you know closure or a lot of id parks and all of that has already been built here yes. now uh, when i say that people also have a lot of queries when they say you know uh, is the market saturated in these areas because uh, now for example sarjapur varthur like areas uh, also you know uh, have reached a price point of 8 to 10000 rupees per square feet today right so now uh, a lot of people think that oh this probably this market is saturated you should have bought at say 6 7000 rupees where you could have seen an appreciation of up to 9 to 10000 rupees so what is your take on this you know concept where the people are saying that this market is saturated as of now east uh, or south or you know these are the main areas right now there are a lot of new projects also coming so yeah if you have, can just... so i yeah, i'll tell you you know it's like i'll, I'll just give you a metaphor for example i don't know whether it's a right metaphor or wrong but i'll just give you an example uh, so when, when it's like a cluster like white field is a cluster and every cluster goes through its journey and it goes through an ups and down starting from formation to stabilization again formation new heights and all that so it's a, it's a, uh, like a kid is actually trying to pump the air in a balloon right so when the balloon is flat and it's a new one he'll pump the air to the fullest and 
the balloon will grow to the fastest at the highest possible speed right. because it was zero inside right but then so that's like market the new market will grow like exponentially high because the basis itself is zero right right but then after that when the kid will go back and take a the second breath he will be preparing for second breath probably some amount of air will come out right i'm assuming he will not close the gap so that that metaphor i'm just doing some uh, example so probably it will take some breathing time so similarly market also it grows initially very fast but then they take there's a breathing time where it get paused right the pricing get little bit stabilized till the next air get pumped so when i say air get pumped next activity happens like my field my field grew to uh, some level in 10 years then it gets stabilized then the next thing happen is metro mm-hmm. right uh, or road widening or new things which came so as and when the new things get pumped into the cluster again it balloons okay it balloons again to some level but then it has its threshold again maybe it will stabilize its after 5 7 10 years again stabilize its some price again it will wait for the net pumping of the uh, you know whatever you call it, any any kind of injection so those thing will actually happen in every cluster so we have to see whether we are in what stage so white field or uh, east bangalore probably we have seen that cycle where you know the pricing increased drastically to a high level let's say from 3000 to 8000 very fast then it was stable for 8000 to 8500 for some time then again the push happens and in last two years it has jumped from 8500 to 13000 probably it will go another to 14 or 15000 or 16000 then again it will wait for the next pump of uh developments or anything which can push the economic activity so every cluster will go through this so right now i think you know there is enough uh, upside available in these micro markets uh, but of course it will depend upon how fast and how effective these uh, injections happens or this uh, pumping happens and uh, it's just a metaphor so i'm saying it's basically any form of economic addition which happens to the cluster okay so similar to east bangalore like that cycle has happened or yeah. we is it fair to say that north bangalore right now is seeing a similar type of uh, true true uh, you know growth yeah. and uh, if you can just elaborate so there's a lot of uh, hype or you know uh, there's a lot of uh, talk going in the uh, you know in the city that you know north bangalore is having a lot of development happening and uh, that's one of the new big zones of you know development and growth in the city so what's what's your take on our outlook on so it? interestingly i'll tell you a fun fact you know when the bangalore airport shifted to north bangalore and the first night it landed from bombay to bangalore i was in there so i still oh. have that boarding pass yes. so it was in 2007 and that flight landed and that year you know changed the north bangalore market okay. so it happens a lot you know from 2007 to 2010 12 five years uh, that market saw a lot of activities especially at land level there was no project which was planned because uh, you know stakeholders were skeptical of the operation of the uh, airport you know there were a lot of because it was the first private airport and there were a lot of skepticism and opposition for stakeholders to move the airport from city center to new location so it, it took some time but once it happened the operation started and it they closed the operation on the city center airport then uh, in next five years we saw a lot of activities then again there was some gap but in last 5 to 7 years we have seen a huge amount of activity in that area uh, especially 2015 onwards in last 7 to 8 years that area is getting huge amount of development whether it's it park or a commercial residential and shopping malls recently you must have heard about the biggest mall getting opened in uh, hebal the phoenix mall of asia yeah. so then you have best of the developers having residential properties there you have best of the tech parks most of the big companies are already moving to that part so north bangalore is also undergoing that uh, uh, cluster formation phase where it is actually ballooning it's growing at a very fast pace of course there may be some stabilization in some time but again it will grow so every like right now the metro will take some time but once the city metro to the airport will start connectivity then you know again things will change so it is happening so north bangalore is definitely one of the area for lokar i mean you can look at that micro market for next 5 to 7 years easily okay so uh, how do these so like you were explaining the cluster system and how developments used to happen uh, that urban infrastructure is that development that happens here earlier it used to be ports and all of that that's what yeah. you were talking about earlier uh, so now uh, 
uh, the development of the tech parks mm-hmm. is that is that prop- mostly the you know driving factor for north bangalore to develop now the majority tech parks coming in and lot of development like boeing itself having their own shop sure. so north there. bangalore is supplying not only it uh, it's a good area it's a good market so a uh, lot of non it industries are also doing them there so shell has a big setup there boeing is having a big setup there a lot of industries are planned there right so and uh, there are a lot of other things which are planned like you know large education institutes have set up campuses in universities in that area so you must have heard about manipal city and you know, opening yeah. a new university there then you have a presidency college a lot of good universities are coming there uh, there are a lot of religious foundations who open large centers religious centers in that area uh, after the airport and that is also getting a lot of traction so you must have heard about a lot of new centers getting opened uh, not only uh, related to one religion but multiple religions so uh, that that's happening there and it will definitely create some trigger point not only it not it also to say uh, if it t2 you must have visited t2 yes. it's beautiful right? yeah. so it's beautiful so it will definitely create demand and uh, more and more people are shifting so to not bang so it has a uh, untapped potential so to narrow it down uh, according to your understanding which are the areas that you know people should look at investing at this point i know we've so just to summarize yeah, sure. the conversation that we are basically saying okay you know like we spoke about is not all of them which are the areas that we should invest uh, at this point or where should people look at investing their money at this point so i mean going back to the same question they said what value we do as a consultant so you know we go by data i mean we don't give by uh, advice based on purely you know our uh, thought process or just by uh, gut feeling or so so we go purely by data so if you look at data you take the data physical development is visible right so if you look at just next six quarters i'm not going beyond that six quarters whatever tech parks are getting delivered in these micro markets all the whole of bangalore so roughly around 28 29 million square feet of commercial it space or it parks will be delivered in the next five to six quarters in bangalore across bangalore okay uh, around 45 to 48 percent of the space is coming towards north bangalore okay which is almost 30 to 40 million square feet this is a big we talk about the development half of the new supply is coming towards north bangalore and around 25 to 26% which is one quarter we can say around 6 and 7 million square feet is coming towards east part which is outer ring road belandu bangalore corridor so cumulatively they cater to almost 75 80% of the market uh, for next six quarters so i think if you ask me based on purely data because these it parks will be functional and of course developers when they build huge it parks of course they have done pre marketing they know the demand and they must be having some uh, traction already that's why they are spending money because it parks generally are not sold during construction or not occupied during construction they are only available for occupation after it is fully done so builders have already pumped in full money mm-hmm. so this lot of research and work they have already done so based on purely that data we are telling because few, so much new supplies coming in north bangalore people will shift companies will shift so obviously employees will shift that area there will be demand in that area so if we are saying 50% of the new supply is going to north bangalore and 25 26% is coming to this part of the bangalore these are the areas to look for i mean uh, one can easily drive one day if, uh, like in a weekend if you want you can just drive on the north bangalore right this side you can see entire section properties all over mm-hmm. it's very easy you can make out which is commercial which is residential it's very easy so you'll be able to figure it out in which particular micro market location where the tech parks are coming they are all in advanced stage of construction mostly what we are talking 20 million square feet is in advanced stage of construction you can see the activity right so uh, based on what you see on ground i think one can take a call but what we are anticipating expecting is these two micro markets especially north will see good traction purely based on data because a uh, large amount of uh, tech space is getting built and will be occupied in next five to six quarters so just to say uh, north bangalore uh, by end of six quarters would be roughly around end of 2024 yeah uh, uh, first quarter of 25 or something so by then a lot of north bangalore uh, developments yes. would have happened so the traction the people's inflow of people would start something around 25 26 or 2025 2026 yes right and uh, so that's so around 2 3 years 4 years yeah you will have a major growth is what yes. is okay so that's it for today guys i, mean, uh, I have one question why you named this podcast under tree tool so to be honest uh, we just thought it was a very cool name and also a very bangalore thing so yeah we just went with it 
Oh, okay, I thought probably you know there may be some deeper reasons, but for me it's a good name. I like this because I started my Bangalore real estate career from Mandiri to Indra Nagar, and I have very good memories of Mandiri to Indra, especially Pizza and Domino's. I used to switch places in lunch and dinner. Very cool, sir. So we have also started with Mandiri to Indra Nagar yeah. with you. All right. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching the podcast. Uh, I hope we were able to give you good insights. And if you have any questions and queries related to real estate, please mention them in the comment section below. And uh, see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you.